untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation. So the entire deck is rotation proof and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Black Rat Spider Sacrifice deck built around Loth Spider Queen. The new 5 mana Planeswalker from Forgotten Realms starts out at 4 loyalty and has a passive ability saying whenever a creature we control dies, put a loyalty counter on Spider Queen. Then the zero ability lets us draw a card at the cost of one life, and the minus three generates a pair of 2-1 black spider creature tokens with menace and reach. Not gonna get to the minus eight very often, since we usually prefer making more spiders, but also gives us a fun emblem that guarantees we deal eight damage if we deal any damage whatsoever. And then we also have three copies of Azariel, Archduke of Avernus. The Red Planeswalker from Forgotten Realms starts out at 4 loyalty. The plus 1 ability gives a team plus 1 plus 0 and haste until end of turn. The 0 ability generates a 1 1 devil token, that's great sacrifice fodder, because when it dies, it deals 1 damage to any target. And then the minus 6 also gives us a fun emblem. And then another centerpiece of the deck is Awaken, the Blood Avatar, the backside of Extus. We're not really interested in casting Extus, even though we could still cast them using our treasure tokens, but I didn't include any white mana in the mana base, because the goal is to always cast Awaken, the Blood Avatar. The 8 mana Mythic Rare Sorcery has an additional cost to cast it, we may sacrifice any number of creatures, and then it costs 2 generic mana less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. So if we sacrifice 2 creatures, we can potentially cast it for 4 mana, if we sac 3 creatures, we can cast it for just two mana and then when we cast awaken the blood avatar each opponent has to sacrifice a creature so it's kind of a removal spell and we get to make a three six black and red avatar creature token with haste and when it attacks it deals three damage to each opponent so a pretty powerful spell in a sacrifice deck where we can potentially sacrifice a bunch of tokens we don't care about and at the same time maybe add additional loyalty to our spider queen and then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a one mana removal spell that can also be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. We've got the full playset of Eye Twitch, a 1-1 flyer that when it dies lets us learn. So in best of one we get access to a seven card sideboard that we can fill with lessons that we can grab with a learn mechanic. So we've got one copy of Environmental Sciences to hit our land drops. Necrotic Fumes as a removal spell that requires us to exile one of our creatures. Three copies of Pest Summoning, this is kind of our default option to generate two 1-1 one -one Pest tokens that we don't mind sacrificing. Then we've got Mascot Exhibition as a more powerful token generator at 7 mana, and Confront the Past to get back one of our Planeswalkers from the graveyard, or maybe take out an opposing Planeswalker. And then we also have the full play set of Shambling Gas as another creature we don't mind sacrificing, a 1-1 one -one that when it dies can give an opposing creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn, or we can generate a treasure token to maybe ramp into our Planeswalkers ahead of schedule. We've got two copies of Village Rites as a 1 mana instant to sack a creature and draw two, as well as the full play set of Deadly Dispute, which does the same but also generates a treasure token, and instead of sacrificing a creature we can also potentially sacrifice an artifact, so we can sacrifice a treasure token for instance to draw two and make a replacement treasure. So turn one Shambling Ghast into turn two Deadly Dispute lets us generate two treasure and draw two cards, so that can potentially ramp into a turn three Spider Queen, which is quite powerful. Then we've got two copies of Flunk as a cheap spot removal spell to complement Blood Chief's Thirst, playing this overpowered kill since there's a lot of dragons running out there, so those won't be able to be answered with powered kill. And then the full place of the fund for specimens, which generates one pest token that when it dies gains one life. And then of course we can grab our various lessons. And that's also the reason why we don't have many three drops in the deck, because we can cast a turn two hunt to set up a turn three pest summoning, so that takes care of our three drop. And if we're ramping with our deadly dispute and our shambling ghast, we want to cast our four drop or five drop on turn three instead. So we still have two copies of Sculper Merchant as a nice card from Forgotten Realms, a 1-4 that when it enters the battlefield it generates a treasure token, so it can also help us ramp, and for one on a black also gives us a sacrifice outlet for creatures and treasures, which also lets us draw a card. And then we've already covered Zariel, we've got our Awaken the Blood Avatar, Spider Queen, and last but not least two copies of Professor Onyx as another nice curve topper to provide card advantage and removal with the minus three. 
And then the mana base includes two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as a creature land that can turn into a 3-3 creature with menace that can also potentially mess with the opponent's graveyard. And then 10 basic swamps, 8 basic mountains and 4 of the black red pathway. So again, no white sources to cast Exodus, even though we could play some of the black white pathways or red white pathways to help us fix. But it's better to just play the basics and that way we have to click a lot less when playing out our lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and hands not particularly great. Could use some cheaper creatures to sack to dispute. It's also not the worst. Merchant gives me a treasure that I can sack to dispute, and then can maybe ramp into Professor Onyx on turn 5. I'll try it. Opponents Grixis colors with a hunt for specimens. So it could be kind of a sacrifice mirror match. Not sure what the blue is for. Zariel a good pickup. So can play Zariel into maybe a Professor Onyx. Although necrotic fumes can answer one of them. Hunt gets Mascot Exhibition. And there's a Spider Queen. Kinda like playing Spider Queen now. It gives us more board pressure if they spend their turn casting Necrotic Fumes. And if they don't fumes, we can start drawing extra cards. Maybe an Awaken the Blood Avatar? Nope. Necrotic fumes it is. So now we can start hitting with our spiders. And, uh... Take it from there. So I can attack with a team. Sack Merchants. Second main to play Zariel. Or I can just keep my treasure to maybe play Professor Onyx. Alternatively, I can Zariel pump the team to get in for more damage right now. Close call. How important is getting Professor Onyx down? It's not bad. Start by attacking, see what happens. Put and takes it. I'll sack the merchant and see what we draw. Another hunt. So I can play hunt, next turn play professor, and then this can get my own mask on exhibition. Although it's possible that pass summoning is still better because we can play it alongside Zariel and then give the tokens haste. A lot of good options. Let's go with confront the past. And then next turn, Professor Onyx first. If they try and kill any of my creatures, I can deadly dispute in response. It's going to be a gold span dragon. Good card. Although we can kill it with Onyx next turn. And do I want to trade? Yeah, I don't hate it. And I could still dispute, but happy keeping the disputes until after Professor Onyx to maybe trigger Magecraft. Trading the past means our spiders are more likely to connect. Alright. If they have another gold span. That could be bad. The blue might be for Alron's Epiphany, which they can cast this turn. Opponent's just gonna pass. Alright, so I'm not sure what that's representing. Maybe a counter spell. Either way, we can start by plussing. And... Kind of liking the Hive as an extra threat. 
over another dispute. And this turn... Maybe kick things off with Zariel, see if there's a response. That resolves. I don't waste words. Let's fight. Then now I'm kind of into playing Ghast and then giving the team haste. And then still have Dispute available, and I'll probably play the Hive. Opponent takes it. Not sure what's going on here, but I'm sure we'll find out. Aha, uh -huh, even death. Okay. Can finish off one of my Planeswalkers. That would be a good time for Alrun's Epiphany, I suppose. Shadow's Verdict instead, and response disputes, which if it draws into a uh, village right, can just win the game. So I want to sag the gas so we get the trigger. And then... I guess if I make a treasure, I can draw two mana instant to win the game too here. Alright, not an instant, sadly. Otherwise I could have given the Draco Lich minus one, minus one, so it can't take out Zariel, but they're probably going for Onyx anyway. Okay. And I'm sure we can figure out a lethal line of play. If I confront the pasts, I could get back Onyx. Opponent does have enough mana for a counter spell potentially. Could just activate the hive and attack. And if they have removal, what happens? I guess hunt, give it haste with Zariel, and then activate hive means they would need two removal spells, which is unlikely. And I even have the mana to pass summoning. Animate hive. And I'm plus with Zariel. An attack for lethal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing some early sacrifice fodder. If we had a 1 drop to play a turn to dispute, ramp into or 4 and 5 drops out of schedule, it would be great. Right now it's a bit on the clunky side, so if we don't find any of our 1 drops or like a hunt for specimens, it could be uh, too slow. But I'm still gonna keep because it has potential. And a Shambling Gas is perfect. So not quite a turn 3 Spider Queen. Because the gas arrived a turn late, but uh, still happy to draw it. So I can hit for 1. And then I could Dispute now, since I'm probably gonna do so anyway, and maybe I draw another 1 drop I can cast. Alright, we did not. So next turn... Probably Spider Queen. Sedgemore Witch is a good one too. Does have Menace, so... Let's see here. If I play Shambling Ghasts... This could still cost 6. So I wouldn't be able to um, Blood Avatar. So if I play Spider Queen... And the opponent removes one of the spiders, the witch can finish off Spider Queen. So it's possible I'm better off playing Zariel and making a devil. And then next turn, hopefully they haven't made any pests. Or even if they did, I can finish those off with uh, pings from the devil. And then we can set up Ghast plus Awaken. I think that's the play. And the witch by itself wouldn't be able to take out Zariel. It's gonna be inscription to make me discard. So lands can go. And then probably Shambling Ghast. 
which hits Zeril for three, next turn make an extra devil. And then by sacking two devils, I can play the uh, Awaken, finish off the pest before making them sack the witch. Seems fine. Your death has now become and an Eye Twitch does not change that since we have two damage to distribute. So this is perfect. Let's see what they learn for. Necrotic fumes to take out our planeswalkers. And hit for six. If they take out our avatar, we can still sacrifice it. Okay, Turgrid's a good one. So could dispute now. Try and find a removal spell by sacking the treasure. Alright, and hunt for specimens will do. Bloodchief's Thirst also works. Hunt could get Necrotic Fumes, which is another answer. And then we can keep Thirst for later. Sure. Maybe more mana efficient. Thanks, all the pests. I would rather keep the Devil. And our opponent explodes, they're about to take six. Still have an active avatar, active planeswalker. So yeah, get to see the synergy with the devil tokens with our Awaken the Blood avatar. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Gassed into dispute, sets up potentially Spider Queen on turn three, although it looks like it's gonna be Zariel instead. Opponent's band colors with a trap finder, so looks like a uh, party deck. Well, I can just pass and then could also use a gas to give the trap finder minus one, minus one, since we don't really need both treasures to play Zariel next turn. Aspirants. All right, let's uh, dispute now. Or I guess I could wait until they target the trap finder with Aspirants. Alright, and then I will dispute. Play Zariel. And make a devil. So that can trade for Aspirant even if they put a counter on it. Double Thirst also looking good in this matchup. Although, yeah, we don't have much else going on. So we'd love to draw another one of my Planeswalkers or Awaken the Blood Avatar. It's gonna be a journey for Zariel. Good thing we have a backup. And there's our Awaken the Blood Avatar, which is gonna be pretty effective next turn. Gonna keep them back since if this is a 3 3, we might have to double block to trade. Yeah, if next turn we can thirst plus make the opponent sacrifice a creature, it's gonna be pretty difficult for them to recover. Kicked Paragon to find more action. We see the one mana counter spell for the party deck to concert the defense. Aspirant stays back. All right, so I get to make a devil, kill the paragon. Doesn't really matter. Kill Aspirant, and then cast this, sacking two creatures, and then we'll just go face. I guess 
I didn't have to cast a Thirst since we could have finished off Paragon with uh, Devil Pings and then uh, this would have made them sacrifice Aspirant because it resolves in that order. So could have had plus one Thirst in hand, opponent had plus two life. Would probably have been slightly better. It's gonna be a Limvala, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, we can take out Limvala. We've got this 3 6 dealing essentially 6 damage per turn and still an active planeswalker. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Shambling Ghast into Hunt. Can maybe get Sciences if we're about to miss our land drops. And then uh, Merchant has plenty of sacrifice fodder. Okay, we'll play Hive. And then now we could go for Pest Summoning instead. So, Jory Disruption pointing towards a blue control deck. Blue black. And get in for two damage. And then pass summoning seems fine. Could also go for merchants if we wanna maybe play around a future sweeper so we can next turn sacrifice some of our creatures already. Which is also fair. If they kill merchants, I'll be a little sad. But it's gonna be turn five before we can play it and activate anyway. That oh, resolves. Make a treasure. And it looks like they're just gonna kill the merchants with a Baleful Mastery, so that does draw a card at least. Get a treasure to ramp into turn five, Professor. And a dispute's good too. So we're diversifying our threats and our board presence a little bit in case of a sweeper. So I'm gonna hit for two and then most likely hunt for specimens, keep up dispute. And I think I want more black mana. The only double red card is our red planeswalker, but for the most part, I'm gonna need more black. Right, and divide by zero on hunts is acceptable. And uh, I think I pass a turn. And then Disputes can sack gas to make an extra treasure, perhaps. We'll do it now. Alright, and then should be able to resolve Professor Onyx without any issues. Unless they have a negate. Can pay for Disruption. That opponent's gonna foretell a card. That works. So hit for one. Play Professor. And I'll grab Spider Queen over Zariel. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we even had Village Rites to sank the pests, draw some cards, trigger Magecraft, we had a backup Planeswalker in hand, and yeah, when uh, you're the opponent and you see Zariel go to the graveyard here, that's pretty bad news. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty nice hand. A Ghast into Dispute sets up great turn threes. Could kill the Paladin too now. Although I might be able to give it minus one, minus one with a gas to take it out instead and save my thirst for a different creature. Zero point also black red, probably gonna see them make a treasure. Second attack first, they'll probably take it. And 
then we'll see what to do in a turn. Alright, in a response, I think we kill it. And do it before they get a treasure in case they had a village rights in hand. Next turn, got a couple options. Merchant seems good, ramps into Professor Onyx next turn. And that's acceptable. Reveals Goldspan Dragon. So that's a good creature to take out with Onyx. And then hopefully they don't have a second copy to take out our professor afterwards. They do seem to be holding some sort of instant. Another Dragon Sphere can also take it out. Dispute instead. Alright, so they got their value. Alright, if we can untap with Onyx, we're in great shape. If they have another gold span, we're in trouble. Trouble it is. So now I can hunt for. Necrotic Fumes take out Goldspan, opponent's got a million treasures, but so be it. Yeah, that's probably the play here. Can't let the dragon get out of hand. And then we gotta hope to draw into some Planeswalkers with the Dispute on Nightwitch. Can also get... Oof, Inferno. Could also get Mascot Exhibition. Eh, Kick Thirsts is probably fine now. And then I can still hunt. And then I will have six mana available. Close to getting back Onyx with the Confronta Past. So that might still be the play. Think still go for black. Probably don't need more than double rent. Gelatinous cube takes out my token. That's gone for good. And a shambling gas. All right, opponent is on empty at least. Did not draw the lands to bring back Professor Onyx. Instead, I twitch which we can dispute. And then, kind of liking the sciences here. Although we could draw into a land, of course, in which case pass summoning looks better. Or maybe just go for mascot exhibition, get the highest impact cards. And then I can always sack my treasure that we get to another dispute. All right, there we go. Think I'm okay passing now. And then I might Exhibition before getting back Onyx, so we have more ways to protect our Planeswalker. Hasty Dragon of the top would be bad news. So I could activate the Hive to block Ghasts. Could even trade for the cube. Could mean that they drew a removal spell for the turn. I don't need the treasure to play my 7 mana spell next turn, but if we also lose the land... I guess we'll still be able to cast it. Sure. If I trade for cube, I'll be able to just plus my Professor Onyx now. And all right, it's going to be Predator instead. So if I bring back Onyx and minus, she'll still be at two loyalty, which is enough to survive the ghast attack. 
So that sounds good to me. And hopefully this time there's no hasty dragon. Merchants, not bad. A lot of treasure to turn into cards. Start by plussing. And uh, yeah, we'll take and awaken the blood avatar. This turn I'm liking mascot exhibition. They can sacrifice the gas to take out my inkling, which clears a path for any potential dragons. But by sacking the gas, they also make my awaken more effective. It's going to be a dispute. Takes out inkling. Ah, this opponent does have a lot of cards to work with now. Still digging. Gotta dodge a hasty dragon. Right, still drawing. So Onyx is likely gonna get to untap here. Okay. And then I twitch his sacrifice fodder for Awaken. Or I could get Thirst as an extra answer for a dragon. I think we can be pretty aggressive here. Play maybe even double Eye Twitch. Awaken. Sacking both Twitches or I can sack one of them. And then be tapped out. Maybe sacking one's enough. Although if I sack both, I can also dispute. How close are we to lethal? We're getting very close. Get summoning. So if I attack with a team. And dispute just does it here. All right, sweet. So managed to crawl our way back after facing Goldspan Dragon and friends. So yeah, overall this Black Rat Sacrifice deck has a lot going for it. It can be a little bit weak to hyper aggressive decks. Think of like a Goblin Tribal deck, especially if they draw multiple lords to beef up their creatures so they don't simply trade for 1-1 one, one tokens. That can be a problematic matchup, although this one that could be addressed if you play sideboarded games in Future Standard, where uh, you could bring in some black sweepers out of the sideboard to clean that up. So it's not an unwinnable matchup in a best of three setting, but the way the deck is configured for best of one at least, that's probably a pretty tough matchup. But otherwise we've got a nice mix of threats between our planeswalkers or creature tokens, so it's a pretty hard deck to interact with which makes it a pretty powerful deck overall. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.